Hello, people! I'm Wesley, your host, with my furry sidekick, Clementine. <coughs> Today's conversation is all about overcoming barriers and working your way past challenges you may be facing on your way to become a resilient you. It's time for another Wesley Podcast online talk show episode thingy brought to you by the good folks at Healthy West Orange. So here we go. On with the show. Every show, I'm joined by our producer, Luna. Say hello, Luna. Hello, Luna. <laughs> and hello, listeners. Glad to have you join us today. Luna, believe me, an orange 2D stick figure faces obstacles when I try to do everyday stuff. I wonder what it would take to get them to draw me some hands. I'm not sure about that, Wesley, but it would be nice to shake your hand or play some cards with you every once in a while. Dear Santa, for this Christmas, I would really appreciate if you could bring me some hands. <laughs> okay, now that's officially on my wish list. Luna, you got something good for us at the end of the show? Always do. Excellent. Let's get going. We're so excited about our guest today, Rudy Darden, who is Peace and Justice Instructor and Professor of English from Valencia College. Rudy works to help people overcome challenges and obstacles through preparation and using tools to deal with these challenges. So, with our catchy guest fanfare, please welcome to the show, Rudy Darden! <laughs> Hey, Wesley. Great to be here. So glad I can be on with you. <laughs> it's so good to have you here, too. Glad you didn't have any challenges getting to the show. <laughs> 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 all right. I'm sure our listeners all face challenges, so this is going to be good stuff. So what kind of challenges and obstacles are we talking about here? I assume you don't mean the ones like at the dog park I take Clementine to on Saturdays? <laughs> I mean, yes, that could be part of the challenges. The challenges I want to talk about today, though, are challenges that usually come from two different sources. So it's a challenge of what we have within when we tell ourselves that we can't do something or that we're not quite ready to do something or that we're not skilled enough to do something. And mm -hmm. then there are challenges that happen from the outside world. These are the challenges that come from maybe an obstacle that's in our way. Maybe there's a requirement that hasn't been met yet. Or maybe it just seems like something that we're going through is just too hard. And so those are the challenges I want to talk about today, both challenges that people can overcome inside of ourselves, and some of the external challenges. Huh. Well, actually, I've heard we can sometimes be our own biggest challenge. True? Very true. And that is that internal, I can't, I can't do something, this is too hard for me. I am a English professor, right? And mm -hmm. sometimes people's greatest challenges is like, I don't know how to write using this punctuation, or I don't know how to write using the kind of strategies that people want me to use. Mm -hmm. And those are things that come from somebody's own idea of what they're good or what they're bad at. And then there are challenges that come directly from like an external source, like from me as their teacher. So when I'm their teacher, my students view me as the external challenge. And they're all like, Professor Darden, can you make things easier for me? And if I can just overcome your class, then I'll overcome my challenge of writing uh, sort of in a way that makes it, um, you know, the way you want it to be. And so I just have to sometimes say to myself when I'm saying I can't do something or put myself in my student's shoes where I might be the challenge for someone else, I have to say, whatever it is, I can overcome it. It's really cool you put yourself in their shoes. Well, so how about your can't that you're currently working through? Wesley, that is a great question. I certainly have many different things that I look at externally and say, I can't do this or I'm not prepared to do that. Mm -hmm. But those are the things, Wesley, that I, I don't have any control over. Mm -hmm. 
I don't have any control over external things that I have to respond to. What I do have control over are the internal I can'ts. You know, we get so much, uh, uh, so many things that come our way that tell us what we can and cannot do. Mm -hmm. But the last thing I want our listeners to ever have to overcome is the internal doubt and the internal can't that might have already been a planted seed that was already, uh, that came there from someone else. I can't worry about the things that uh, people expose to me, but I can uproot the I can'ts that maybe a parent has put in my life, that maybe a teacher has put in my life, or even the I can'ts from some of my friends. And those are the things that I get to go and I think about all the things that people told me I can't do, and I can get rid of those and I can begin to provide myself with an I can strategy or maybe a not yet strategy that then allows me to then take on whatever it is that comes at me externally. Huh. So what is an example of an I can't or I can strategy that people can use every day? Wesley, I'm glad you asked me that. So, for example, if I am trying to lose five pounds, mm -hmm. I may say to myself, I can't do that because I don't know how to get that done. Or I may say, I can do it if I just do a number of things. Whenever I feel like I can't do something, what I usually do is write down why I can't do it. So I write down all the different things that may be stopping me from being able to lose just maybe five pounds. So I say, maybe I can't get up early enough in the morning to maybe do some workouts because I'm really not a morning person. Or I write down like, hey, I don't have access to a gym, so I can't work out the way I want to. <laughs> or simply, I just don't have the motivation and I can't really find the strength to really get up. Whenever I write down all the things that I can't do, it allows me to focus on one thing that I can do to maybe overcome the I can't. Mm. And so the strategy here is just to simply write everything out that you think you can do mm -hmm. and the things you can't do. Mm. And then once you see it in writing, then you can say, what's one thing that I can overcome now that will be a small win to help me get to the goal that I want to have accomplished, which in my case is, I just need to lose five pounds. <laughs> I love this. An I can strategy. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> well, I think I know the answer to this, but can other people be challenges? And, and that's a great question because sometimes the people in our lives, they're great to us. Sometimes they make sure that they eliminate obstacles and challenges from our lives. Sometimes they prepare us for challenges. But many times what really stinks is when the challenges like my mother and mm. the challenge or the obstacle is like my father mm or someone that I trust, because they're telling me I can't do something, but I really believe I can do it. And the only reason I can't is because I may not have been given an opportunity to do it. And that's where the hard part comes in, having the conversation with somebody that's difficult to say, maybe you're telling me I can't, and right now I've shown you that I can't. <laughs> but maybe if I'm given the opportunity and I work hard and I try my best, Maybe I can do it, but that is an uncomfortable conversation sometimes that we need to have. Right. So then how can people learn to spot or identify what might be in their way? One of the things that I do, and this is what I've been told by my mentors and people who have given me guidance, is to try to prepare for things that I know could distract me or could take me away from accomplishing a goal. Oh. So this is all external stuff, right? So preparation is key. So we say to ourselves, what could possibly be an obstacle before the obstacle ever comes? Does that make sense, Wesley? Yes, yes, of course. Uh, preparation is key. <laughs> Interesting. So what are some common barriers people face when wanting to become, say healthier and have to address an unhealthy habit or just face an everyday small or big problem. 
So here's the thing. That that's so good. Here here's how we do this. Mm-hmm. One thing we first have to understand is that and this is going to sound like an English professor, but just hang with me, Wesley. <laughs> hang with me, listeners. Here we go. Number 1, we are the main character in the story of our own life. Mm. I had someone say to me before, if someone were to write a book about your life, who would want to read it and why? And then that same person said, given that you are the main character in the book of your own life, what are you going to do to make sure that you live your life in a way that's worth reading? So I had read many different books and I had all of these different characters <laughs> and I had all of these different movies that I watched, but I never considered myself as the main character. And so in preparing for how my life is going to be and the obstacles, one of the things I always think about is what would this character do that I'd like my life to be modeled after? What would this character respond with given this challenge? And if I am really honest with myself, am I the hero in that story of my life? Or am I the villain in the story of someone else's life where I'm a challenge or I'm an obstacle in the story of their life? I think once we get to understand that we are either the hero in our stories or possibly the villain in somebody else's story, we can prepare our own lives to be the kind of movie that we're proud of when it's over. Hmm. Well, I know I want to be the hero in the Wesley story. <laughs> That's right. Something tells me you are. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Well, I bet some listeners may want to know, are there any easy fixes when facing a barrier or challenge? An easy fix, number one, whenever we face a challenge or a barrier, is to acknowledge that this is a challenge. That's just the easy thing we have. We just say to us, this is a challenge. And remember, I'm the hero in the story of my own life. So this is a challenge, and I want to just acknowledge that it is. But here it is. This is kind of sarcastic now. I can deny or just run away from the challenge because that's what we see sometimes in movies. (laughs) Somebody just sees something that's too challenging, and the hero just turns around and runs away. That's an easy response. But I don't know if that's how we want the story or the chapter that we're going through to play out like that. Another response that we could have, though, is that we could stand there and face the challenge. And we can say, is this something that I'm going to do on my own? Or is this something that's going to require a team, Mm -hmm. a support person, Mm -hmm. my sidekick? If I'm Batman, where's Robin? Right? If I'm uh, the main person that's going to be able to take on this, Who am I going to need to help me get through it? Well, I think that's one of the easy fixes that we can do. We can say that this really is a problem and I only have a couple of options. I can face it or I can run away. And if I am going to face it, then I can't do it alone, (laughs) especially when I see that it is a big challenge. Wow, that's really great info, Rudy. So What's three things you want our listeners to remember when facing obstacles or challenges to becoming healthier? So the healthy part goes right back in to being the main character in the story of your life. (laughs) If you're going to be the main character, you got to be healthy, right? I mean, you can't be the kind of character that all of a sudden is ready to deal with the challenge, but you don't have the health and the physical stamina or strength or the mental strength or emotional strength to get through it. So a couple of things that we can do is one, acknowledge that we have to train our minds, train our bodies, and also get some help with how we deal and manage with our emotions. So number one is just train. Just prepare ourselves and train. Number two, after the training, We have to then seek guidance because sometimes it's good when we do the work and it's another thing when people can come alongside of us and show us that what we're doing is good. So we train, we get a partner to hold ourselves accountable, 
And then here's the best part of it all. Mm -hmm. We reward ourselves. Ooh, I like that. Whenever we do good, we have to say to ourselves, hey, that was something that I overcame. That was a nice workout that I did. That's a nice book that I read. And now I'm going to reward myself. And something tells me that you know how to reward yourself, <laughs> Wesley. And something <laughs> tells me that we all know what we like to get when we do a great job at something. You are so true with that. <laughs> that is good stuff. Well, I think I'm going to put one of those to use today. Awesome. Probably the rewarding part. <laughs> and with that, it's time to play... Five things we now know about our guests because they are here on our show and I worked really hard on coming up with the questions last night. <laughs> Rudy, are you ready to tackle this obstacle? <laughs> I don't know. I think I'm prepared for it. And so now I'm ready. Okay. Well, Luna, start the drama timer thing. When you're shopping for bell peppers, do you prefer red, orange, yellow, or green? Easy, green. I like that. Animal companions. Do you prefer dogs, cats, neither, or something else? Both. I have a dog. I love my dog. Shout out to my dog, Roxy. She can't hear me, but I have a dog. But I grew up loving cats, so I'm a dog and cat person. I love that. <laughs> Favorite color or color combination? Glad that you said combination, since I'm a dog and cat person. Right. I also like red and black. Beautiful. <laughs> What's the heaviest thing you ever successfully picked up or moved on your own? Weights. I like to think I'm strong because I'm a hero in my own book. <laughs> I can lift almost 400 pounds on my what? chest. Yes. 400 Ooh. pounds of weightlifting. Bench press. Yes. Okay, I'm impressed. Uh, and finally, favorite thing to pull out of the kitchen cabinet to spice up a dish. Easy. Hot sauce. Hot sauce. <laughs> Well done, and hopefully that wasn't too challenging. <laughs> I see what you did there, Wesley. No, it wasn't <laughs> bad at all. Thanks for having me, though. And thank you for playing. Five things we now know about our guest because they are here on my show and I worked really hard to come up with these questions last night. Thanks a lot, Wesley. You got it. Rudy Darden, peace and justice instructor and professor of English at Valencia College, has been our guest today talking with us about ways to overcome challenges and obstacles to stay on track to becoming a better you. Luna, what have you got for us this week? I'm actually really excited today. I had this job interview last week, right? And I'm not really a fan of interviews. Talking to people can be hard. Now, I know what you're thinking. I literally produce a podcast. I'm talking to a bunch of people right now. How does that make sense? Yeah, well, for the podcast, I have the magic of editing, and I don't have to actually see you guys. No offense. <laughs> and yeah, I'm usually a people person, but it's just harder when it's one-on-one -on -one and there's something big at stake. It's nice to be able to eat, you know? Anyway... I had this interview with my college bookstore. I knew I was qualified. I mean, I used to work at the library back at home, and I'm good with people. But still, I was super nervous. I practiced like a million times with my theater major friend. <laughs> and today, they called, and I got the job, you guys! Really, though, I've had a bunch of interviews lately, and this one finally got me somewhere. I get to help millions of stressed students find all their textbooks. Well, I say get to. Still, victory. And don't worry, Wesley. I promise I will still have time for the podcast. <laughs> anyway, what do you think? You can tweet at HWO Wesley. Well, that's the end of another show. Subscribe to our podcast if you liked it. And follow me on Twitter at HWO Westley. To learn more about becoming a healthier you, visit healthywestorange.org or connect with us on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. My thanks to our producer, Luna Martinez, for all her hard work. And to all our listeners out and about in Healthy West Orange, 
Thanks for letting us be part of your day. Make it a great one. I'm Wesley. Say goodbye, Clementine.